The first cheese vending machine I've ever seen. A hunk of cheese, $10. All right, so we're here at East Hill Creamery and uh, let's see some more. All right, cool. What's the name of this town? Uh, we're in Perry, New York. Been making cheese for three years now, the 5th of oh. May, which is my first ago. I was a dairy farmer for 35 years. Uh, we started with 18 cows in 1981. Comp day and a rocklet. And then he helped us do So we bring the milk in with our own milk truck, put it in these large uh, cheese vats. As you can see, they're copper lined, very traditional for Alpine style cheese. If you were in France, the identical. And then we put culture and rennet into the milk. Off with raw milk, uh, yeah. grass fed raw milk cheese. Ooh, so, nice. So our cheese will be much more flavorful than the typical cheese where our cheese has its own flavor because we don't pasteurize. So when you pasteurize, it kills all the flora and the bugs that give the, the, the cheese the natural flavor where ours has the flavor. Oh, that's, that's special, yeah. Yes, and that's Very really special. what we're chasing as far as the cheese. And that's why we chose to do what we did. That anything harmful will be aged out of the cheese and that, at that point, or the cheese will show a defect and it should be discarded. Warmer rind on the cheese. First thing you do is you want to smell it. <laughs> Sorry, I just mm -hmm. always catch people. <laughs> That's funny. You're going to take all you want. It smells, wow, it smells so fresh. Mm, I love that. It's just cut. Like, I don't know. You're going to want all your senses of your tongue. You can help you with this body. That's definitely that Parmesan feel. Mm, yeah. And then once you just think you caught or captured a nice flavor and you can put a name on it, that's how you're going to remember this cheese compared to the other three. Oh, I think what we'll do with the white one. This is going to be Happy Accident. If you could take a piece and... What kind of cheese is Happy Accident? It's a rock lot. Oh, oh, it smells. Yeah. yeah, so how, how would you make that decision to age seven or eight months as opposed to 33 months? Oh, flavor, because we're going to taste some 33 months. Mm. That's your side. Underpass came from the name. We built an underpass under 20A. You probably came over it this morning, I bet. Did you come to me? I didn't say anything about the crystals in the summer. Did anybody detect that? Got some crystals? Mm, yeah, yeah, I tasted those. those were, that, I love that texture. That was so amazing. This is going to be salty, robust, earthy, very complex. If you leave in the mouth long enough, you're going to get mm. lots of flavors. And when we walk downstairs in a few minutes, you'll probably still be tasting something. Bright idea was it to do the vending machine because that's pretty. Smart. We saw that in Europe when we were over. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did nine thousand dollars of that last year. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's me and Kyle. Huh? But what, 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 what does somebody do with this uh, felted wool dryer balls? You throw them in a dryer. Instead of a fabric stuff. Gets rid of the static. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't the hair get all over your clothes then, or no? No, they don't. Huh? Wow! Right on. Okay. That's, that's, put in the, put in the dryer. Are you Brother Anthony? No, I'm Brother David. What's your name? Brother Anthony. Brother Anthony, nice brother to meet you. Good I'm meet Jason. You. Oh, good. You with the group? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Well, do you want to come in and sit down for a bit? Um, now, what is our schedule? <laughs> if you'd like to use the store, are they closed at 5.30? Okay. Jason, there's cookies here. Whoa, Monk's cookies. Yeah. And cheesecakes. Eighteen dollars for a cheesecake. Check it out. Frozen cheesecakes. Take them home. They even have pina colada and rum raisin. See, Monk, monks can take care of alcohol, right? Heavenly breakfast. Can they? Oh, heavenly breakfast cookie. Mm. Oh, here's the monk's bread. I bet people see these in the in the in the supermarket. And don't even believe that monks actually make them. But actually, it's right here. We met the monks that make this bread. Oh, they even have monks' biscotti. Ginger, chocolate, almond, lemon. Oh, there's even monks' honey. 
brandy flavored almond, raspberry, blueberry, creamed honey, elderberry, cranberry, bourbon. And here's some uh, sexual education books. Boys should be boys, not girls. Adam and Eve after the pill. Paradoxes of the sexual revolution. The Catholic Church, why Catholics can't sing. Seven secrets to raising healthy sons. When you pick one for me. Uh, pick, pick the bread? Yep. All right. What's, what, what's your name? My name is Min. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Whoa, Min's cutting some bread. Thank you, Min. Thank you, man. You're welcome. She's going to let us just try How long have you lived here? I live in town, but I've been here. Uh, I come in here with the brothers for 22 years. 22, 22 years. Wow. Oh, I see. You're right. You, you, don't, you don't live here. Only the brothers live here. Right. Oh, right. I live in town, but I come here with daily man. Oh, thank you. And, yes. Sorry, it's a little escape. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Either, any, anyone? <laughs> Mm. Oh try uh, this one. Wait, which one's that? The orange. Oh, orange. Okay, this is orange. This is orange. Yeah. Mm. Mm, that's some quality bread. The monks knows how to know how to bake. Thank you, thank you, man. Thank you. See you You're next welcome. time. Well, nice to see you, and nice hopefully you, you come back for a visit, right? I'd love. We'll make it a light lunch, but if it's so good, it'll be a heavy lunch. Thank you very much. Oh, Hello. What a beautiful Hi. Stare Hi. My goodness. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine. How are you? Fine. Thank you. <laughs> What's up, everybody? You have seen Niagara Falls. Well, you haven't seen Letchworth State Park with the Genesee River. This is Middle Falls. Check this out. This is upstate New York. Who knew this was up here? I didn't know until I'd been here. I didn't know. I had no idea. Oh! You don't want to ride those rapids. Let's get as close as we can. Um, it's the largest waterfall in Letchworth, over 300 foot drop. And then just up the river is Upper Falls, which you can't really see from this view right now, but you can see the train trestle behind us. Uh, we will have a chance to go look at that um, Upper Falls in a little bit. Right on. Whoa! We've got a turkey vulture. They're native to this area. Um, they're just searching for different uh, prey. They glide over the over the gorge. Wow, turkey vulture. That's some hardcore turkey up there. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, I came. Yeah, that's a turkey vulture. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> it's it's just amazing. So beautiful. Mommy, you're so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> but look at these falls. That is powerful. Whoa! You gotta love that. Wow. Wow. And you can have lunch here, dinner, you can stay overnight, book a room, book a cabin. But check out the power of water. By the way, no standing up here on the ledge. That's dangerous. That would be selfie suicide. You don't want to be doing that. Don't stand up here. You work here, right? Yes. Well, tell me, anybody anybody fall off here and kill themselves? Uh, not that I know of at this particular spot here. Okay, <laughs> another spot. 
do you know poison ivy looks like? Show me, please. It's loud. I gotta oh, talk that's loud. Plant here. It's just starting to leaf out right now. It's poison ivy. Right there? Yeah, you don't want to touch okay, it. Okay, don't be touching that. <laughs> don't. That's not worth a selfie suicide either. Yeah. Stay behind the barrier. Who needs Niagara Falls when you got that? Yeah. Yeah. We got. Who needs Niagara Falls? No, we got this. That's big enough already. How big do you want it? Big enough. It's big enough. It's totally big enough. Oh, it does. All right, I'll, I'll come here when the when the floods out. Flood season, and that's where you come right here. Nice. Like well, it's yeah. You don't want to ride those rapids. Have white water rafting, not in this section. Not right <laughs> Really? I thought, I thought that'd be that'd be right where it would be. Right? You know? <laughs> yeah. Cobblestone Society Museum. Hello. Hello, oh, welcome. Thank you. We've got a guest book if you can sign in. We'd be happy to know that you were here with us today. Happy to sign, yeah. What's your name? Erica. Nice to meet you, Erica. Thanks for coming. It's our pleasure. This is beautiful here. Wow. Okay, this is the oldest cobblestone church. You're in it. And. Wow. This is very unique to the area. Cobblestones were formed from glacial action on the land. And there was a lake over this area, right where the road is, is where the lake uh, shore was. So the cobblestones were rolled by the waves, and some were rolled by glaciers. So they had water and they had ice that formed. That water. made them nice and smooth. And so the rubble stones here are more like the glacier type example that was rolled. Uh, Oh, centuries ago. I forget my numbers, but it was a long time ago before I was born. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you have these, these are the lake wash stones, and these are actually the typical cobbles that they refer to. They can be kind of flat, they can be hot dog shaped, they can be uh, round, all different shapes depending on the type of stone. Most of it's sedimentary. Uh, here is the mortar that they used. Uh, it's kind of like a secret ingredient. Uh, they did use sand water, and what other elements they might have had in their recipe they did not reveal. But it's a very good mortar, and you'll see the examples uh, when you tour the buildings of the type of mortar that they used. They would build about five layers a day in good weather. And the church was built from April to October, the year that the church was built, and that was because they had good weather, not like you see out there now. Mm. And this is the example of how the outside looked. It's more like the presentation. Okay, we'll go in here and then I'm way up and we'll see. Okay. But I want to make sure everybody sees what's here. Okay, as you see, coming into the sanctuary, they have an altar. But years ago, they did not have an altar. They actually have pulpit mounted on the wall. And they did not want to be like other churches, okay? The Universalist Church said, we're going to be different. And we want to have the pews facing this way. Facing to the back side? And the back. But as you walk out of church, you'd be facing the pulpit. So they felt that was kind of neat. Now, they turned the pews around in the 1860s. They wanted to conform at that time. And the pews were white. They took paint and they painted them the brown color and used a roller to create a wood grain pattern. The ladies are up there in the all, in the uh, choir loft, and they got that little curtain running across. It served as a modesty curtain, oh. so you couldn't see anything, uh, you know, beyond the shoes. No temptations. Right. So Thou shalt not be tempted. 
to look up the skirt. The screen over there is to hide the boy pumping the organ. They just felt, well, let's, let's cover that up. Oh, I see, up there, yeah. The Notice the design of our furnaces, and the stalls rather, that have the piping going all the way around so everybody gets a chance to have some heat. Back in the day, they charged pew rent. Pew rent? The great George Pullman had a seat here at one time because he was a regular church member. Wow. And he said, I would like to build a church in Albion for my parents. And that's the one that still stands today in Albion. And that's when this church kind of lost their congregation because people went that way mm. Albion. Okay. So, going back to the pew rent. People that did not have the pew rent would sit up in the bleacher section. Wow, the nosebleeds. Yeah. The nosebleed section way up here. Now, what else? They have um, the baskets. And they started to take collections. They would pass the basket. And as you can see, it's lined with satin. And nobody would know who's putting in what kind of money. So it's sort of a secret. Yeah, yeah, I see that. So uh, about the pew rentals, did did you, did people come and just rent it for the for the for that Sunday, or did they have like box seats where they did have it for the whole season? Uh, I'm not sure how they kept that as far as uh, donations go, but I always got the impression that when you paid pew rent, you paid for the year. Well, paid for the year. I, I see. I guess it's I, definitely the pew rent. It would be for a person to come with their family every time they came yeah. to worship. It would be theirs. And then if a visitor just happened by, they would always be sent to the balcony. Mm. And so the less expensive seats were up there, and any visitor was welcome, but they would have to go to the balcony. Over to this direction is the men's restroom. It's marked on the door that it was the men's privy. The ladies would go downstairs in the church hall. <laughs> so this one's not original, but it looks the same as it would have been. It's a time been. period appropriate. Oh. I'm gonna, can, I, can I enter? Huh? Can I walk in? Sure. Yeah? Sure. Okay. Can you roll it or drag it or twirl it around? I don't want to break it. In the 1920s, we have it furnished in the 60s. Just to give it continuity all throughout all the rooms. Well, there's pepper nuts or something. Uh, oyster, oyster crackers. Oyster, oyster crackers. Oh, oh yeah. Oyster crackers is that the oysters could be shipped on the Erie Canal to get out to Western New York because before, by the body cooler, body it's cooler, not a coffin, not a casket. So back before body they had embalming, cooler. people would definitely always have funerals in their home, of course. And what they did is. <laughs> To keep the body cool, they would order this from their local undertaker and they place the body within and take ice and line a little receptacle area with ice that would keep the person cool. And of course, you close it up. And so it you could keep them around for a while. Yes. And then, of course, when the ice melted, you had a little faucet on the bottom there. You could drain the water out, but you still had to put more ice in. And so how long did this body like hang around the house? A couple of days. And it was called a wake. And the okay. reason they wanted to have a wake was to show the body and invite the family. But also to make sure that person didn't sit up and say, hey, what's ha what's happening? <laughs> so they don't want that person to wake up. That's why they call it a wake. <laughs> Just in case they no. wake up. All right. So this Hopefully they wake up. Opening here. <laughs> is if they wish to view the face of the deceased. You can just, there's nobody in there now, but uh, you can look inside and see their face. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that worked. ...of this house. He didn't live here, but there were some financial issues that the residents were paying their mortgage, and he got, his relative of theirs, he got um, custody of the house. And we know he was in this area, though, because he used to write, I walked the dusty trail of the ridge road. 
So he was in very honored to be able to do the tour. Now this is a stereoscope. If you want to look through there, oh, yeah, yeah. point it toward the light. Anybody want to look through and see a 3D picture? This is the early IMAX. <laughs> oh, there you go. Handle on it. There you go. Good job. Now, I just noticed this piece was brought out from our collections. Is they had at stores a lot of stereoscopic pictures, yeah, which would be the viewing entertainment of the family back in the day that they would sit and look at these, and sometimes there'd be... Thank you, Erica. Oh, well, okay, welcome again, and thank you, and you have a wonderful trip. I'm glad you came. Oh, we love it here, we love it here, it's amazing. Yes. <laughs> okay, look, there's a train in there. Hello, hi. What's your name? My name's Kat, and you're at the Medina Railroad Museum. Nice, can I buy a ticket? Uh, I'm gonna give you some tickets. <laughs> You are, sir. Okay, so he's not real. You're real. Oh, yep. Okay. That's George. Well, hello, George. He's doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Thomas. Thomas, nice to meet you. It was uh, built in the late 1800s. I think it was opened in 1904. Everything in here is original except for our ticket booth, and especially just for the museum. If you look at the photos here, and now you can see uh, people that actually were working in, in this particular room. Can I ask you, how much do you love trains? Uh, it's kind of a disease. <laughs> <laughs> once you uh, once you get a kid into little toy trains and all that, it, you never get out of it. And you'll see back here, it just it goes crazy. If you start out with little trains, and I bought full size trains. Full size trains. Yeah, I have my own fire truck. I have my own tour bus. So. Are you from here? I live uh, about thirty miles away. And you're born right here. Yep, yep, born right here. Safe to say trains are your life. Uh, well, just uh, craziness is my life. <laughs> <laughs> Helmets. Oh. Not a hat, it's a helmet. Even, uh, for protection. I had one given to me for my birthday for, uh, from Netherlands um, in the uh, late 1800s and that. But it's in the collection up there. But uh, his uh, idea for the museum was uh, trains, fire department, police, canal, and local history. The uh, layout, we started this in, uh, I believe it was 2001. We started on this end and worked our way down that way. Uh, it was mostly volunteers. Uh, we, uh, we get several trains going on all that. It depends on how many uh, operators we have. If we get a derailment, even with this scale, uh, it'll keep the track up and I can catch the uh, layout on the Nope. It's all paper mache, chicken wire underneath. Uh, wood frame. 3,000 railroad cars currently on the layout. Somewhere's around there. Uh, yep. Uh, we have about 10,000 cars total in our collection. Somewhere's around that. <laughs> uh, 210 cars behind five engines with our total. Well, you can start and stop it there? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, what's a fast wheel? There's even, wow, look at that. That's something. Oh, he's working back there. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. What you doing? Uh, just fixing a locomotive. Oh, fixing locomotives. All right, that's an important job. I have a feeling you've spent a lot of money on trains, right? Uh, <laughs> okay, no, not one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, it's, a, it's expensive. I have a, a G scale layout that's uh, probably about twenty thousand dollars. What, what is what is that? Uh, that's the bigger size. We have, there's probably like um, seven different scales of uh, trains. So this is HL. It's one of the more popular, but the O scale is one of the other ones, like Lionel and that. Oh, I see. That's that's yep. these train sets. Yeah, these are HO, yep. And some are, so you have one worth $20,000. Yep, uh, mine's a uh, G scale. It's uh, about the size of a shoebox. It's uh, built for outdoors. You leave it right out in the rain and the snow. They make snow blowers for them. Wow. Uh, then I'll shoot the snow four feet. And of course, they have the sound and uh, lights and smoke and all that. So, nice. that'd be realistic, right? So. Yeah. Like those cars are very similar to the ones that we run out here in the rail. 
All except for that last one. A lot of stuff here. Um, every day is a new discovery. There's so much detail. There is. It's, 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 it's spectacular. Uh, grabbing a couple locomotives in case one of them doesn't work. Well, I don't know if we got out here doesn't work. I mean, you really love trains, don't you? Yeah. How much do you love trains? Uh, quite a lot, I guess. Um, I don't know exactly. <laughs> nice. Well, well, you seem to be good at it. Well, working on, you're, you're the technician back there, aren't you? Oh uh, yeah. Well, me and one or two other guys are the technicians around here. Yeah. Sweet. What's your name? Uh, my name is Brendan. Nice to meet you, Brendan. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, I'm Jason. Nice to meet you, Jason. Cool. Right on. I love your work. Thank you. Yeah, so that locomotive in there is one of mine, actually. I just got done increasing the weight so I can pull more. Hopefully I'll be able to pull the entire train that I have for it now. Wow, nice. I mean, you, you'll get it working, going out, going on the tracks. Yeah. He loves his trains. And he's good at it. Is that, how, what was the weight? 300,000 pounds, something yeah, like that? 300,000. And there was uh, 400 something of these made. and There's What? 450 left uh, built. There's 58 surviving. Yeah. And there's only eight from this railroad. Yeah. Damn, museums are for showing off, right? Well. Well, we love to show off. <laughs> Holy moly. Holy moly. Oh, I'm going in. Smells like diesel. These are uh, V12 engines. Mm -hmm. uh, they're diesel. 2,500 volt power. Yeah, something like that. Diesel electric. So the uh, motor runs and spins this, spins this big electric motor, and that's what runs the, uh, the gear underneath. So it's not like a regular um, motor transmission type thing like in your truck and all that. So. It's kind of like a big Prius, isn't it? It's like a big Prius. <laughs> just a just a little big bigger. Prius. <laughs> wow. This is uh, about a 1949 uh, General Motors. I uh, made. <laughs> Well, I can just imagine, you know, we're, dry, we're, we're we're riding along these tracks, picking up some hobos along the way, <laughs> kicking them off, <laughs> just kick them off, just get them out. Yeah. Right up in here is another room, that's all storage, and actually that the other door opens right out to the outside. Really? Wow. You can sit right in the seat. What is this? Oh, you can sit down here? Uh, well, it's more like a storage. You would think the bathroom would be in there, but the bathroom wasn't. That's, That's where you could bathroom. lock up the misbehaving passengers, I <laughs> yeah. think, right? The bathroom was the uh, down <laughs> You can sit in the seat. There's a yeah. dead man uh, switch there. The switch. fumes must have been so strong. Uh, that's so much a fear. I think the noise would be, yeah. and all that. If you see some of the videos of the Canadian one, I just saw that like a month ago with the snow that they were going through. It was just impacting so much on the windshield that, you know, I, why bother even having windshield wipers yeah. because you're gonna hit what you're gonna hit. Uh. It's not like you can do anything about it. I see dynamite down here. Right? Uh, those are fuses and torpedoes. <laughs> yeah, not dynamite. No. <laughs> Okay. What's your name? But it sure looks like it. Steam generator. Well, there's there's Motorola. Well, we're in a diesel train. From what year? Forty nine. Nineteen forty nine. This train museum is incredible. I love this museum. I love it too. Thank you very much. Have you brought any dates here? Huh? Have you brought any dates here to, to the to your own train? Not yet. Next week. Next weekend. Next weekend. Yeah, maybe when the weather's nice. Eh? Saturday night at, in the uh, in my train. Yeah. Cat, would you like to describe the hauntings back here? Uh, in the museum? Which one would you like to know about? There's uh, quite a few. Um, when I first started here, I had an experience. I was back at the cases, and I heard walking in the back room. 
and I thought it was one of the conductors back there. And I came back up here kind of just ignoring what happened. And that's when who I thought would have it been walked through the door and come to find out it was no one back there. I was the only one here. Um, I had someone tell me on the camera, that camera, um, someone actually was supposedly standing here watching me work. This camera? Yep, that camera right there. Okay. Um, I was in the ticket booth, no one was out here, but I guess someone in the back watching the camera saw someone basically materialize and watch me work. Behind um, you. Wow. Yep, I was say someone right here. Just a black shadow figure was watching me work. Um, I see orbs a lot here on the cameras. That's kind of a daily occurrence. And the most recent one that I saw was I was in the back room and I was walking through the 999 room and I saw someone run from where I'm standing now to the windows. And that was the most recent one. And again, I was the only person in here. So. Well, does anybody else get these... Uh Sightings? Yeah, uh, the gentleman that was actually helping Tom with the E8 tours, he sees them as well. Oh, he does. Yep. What about, what about uh, Thomas here? <laughs> no? No. Uh. He's not here enough. <laughs> but yeah, so it's pretty active here on certain days. We hear voices and then footsteps almost every single day, though. No, no you, you and Brody are definitely not like, you know... Taking some medications no. in here, right? <laughs> no, um, it's, I mean, even the executive director, she's heard a few things. Um, we all kind of experience something on one level or another. All right. Um, we believe it's Marty that might be the ghost here. Oh, yes. um, so that's the belief. And then the, that's at least up in this Medina room. Back in the layout room, we believe it was the uh, handyman that used to live here um, who passed away in the back room. Or in his back apartment. Oh yeah, there's there's a lot of lot of history in this in this building, isn't there? Oh yeah. Train Depot. Um. So, it's kind of just sporadic and kind of just random, but there has been sightings. Brody, is there ghosts in here? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say yeah, definitely. Uh, once in a while you hear creaks and noises, people walking, voices. Um, the most prominent one that I've noticed is our late founder. Um, you will see him doubt from that door over there to the front door. Marty, he? right? Marty, yes, Marty Phelps. Um, he passed um, away uh, two years ago. And he had a very, pers a very interesting personality to him. A lot of the times when you were here, the train was just getting ready to leave, you'd see him doubt from his apartment outside trying to struggle to get his jacket on. And he, he was a character all of himself, so... When I see stuff like that here now, I know it's him either watching over the place or just going about what he would have done. So, I, yeah, definitely, I'd say he's here. But his, his heart, his heart w w here. stays here, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. He lives on in this, in this building. Yes. In a good way, right? Yes. Very good way. Okay, good. A voice that's not ours outside all right, so if I stay here long enough, I might, I might get to get those feelings as well. Well, can I stay overnight? Sure. Yeah. We'll put you right next to George. Sure. That dude is freaky right there. I mean, you come around the corner here, and then there he is, just, just sitting there right there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh man. Thank you guys. You're welcome. Thank you so much Stop for share, sharing your train love with us.